losing Wells this year. She's low key. Her father was Pat Summerall, great, great announcer, great football player. I would say this, a very good football player and a great announcer. Does that make sense? Yep. I mean, he was very good. I don't know if he was, I don't want to use the word OJ. OJ no, no, no. I don't know if he was OJ. Uh, and there's Stephen, Stephen Jung. We have the whole group. Where's Chris? Is he here? He's here. Chris, where are you? He's buying food. It's a nice store, though, isn't it? It's a good thing. Yeah, but turn the cameras in her. She's running the campaign. She's doing it's funny. A when I grew, when I was growing up, some summer all she's got good genetics. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you. Susie Wiles is here. Donald Trump has just announced moments ago that he is going to name Susie Wiles, his campaign co-chair, to be the chief of staff of his presidency once he gets to office starting in January. And I do want to read you the statement here. He says, Susie Wiles just helped me achieve one of the greatest political victories in American history and was an integral part of both my 2016 and 2020 successful campaigns. Susie is tough, smart, innovative, and is universally admired and respected. Susie will continue to work tirelessly to make America great again. It is a well-deserved honor to have Susie as the first ever female chief of staff in United States history, I have no doubt that she will make our country proud. As we talked about earlier today, Susie had been the top contender going into this. She is someone who makes Donald Trump feel comfortable. She is also someone who has really lasted the longest in Donald Trump's orbit, a place that is known for knife fighting and backstabbing. She has been loyal to the former president, a constant by his side since he left office in 2021. One thing I will say, Jake, she had some stipulations that he clearly agreed to, telling one source that she didn't want the clown car to be able to have access to the White House at any time, meaning those people who they don't want near Donald Trump. She clearly won that argument. She will be the first female chief of staff in United States history. That's huge news. I am interested in learning, uh, and maybe you can make a list of the people who would qualify as the clowns, because... Uh, I'm sure everybody has their different take on who might constitute members of the clown car. But that is that is a uh, interesting news. And she certainly uh, ran Donald Trump's most professional uh, campaign. Uh, Kristen Holmes with the breaking news. Thanks. Scott Jennings still with us. Uh, Scott, your reaction? Oh, great pick. I think uh, what was said in the statement is absolutely true. She's universally respected in the party. The organization of the campaign uh, and the fact that he stuck with the leadership team all the way through, I think, is a testament to just what a great job that she did. Uh, being the first female chief of staff in the White House, I think, is a huge marker uh, for both President Trump and the Republican Party. So I think I think if if she can bring the kind of discipline and organization to the White House that she just ran this campaign with, Donald Trump's got a really good chance to get off to a great start and begin achieving objectives right out of the way. So you're going to get a lot of uh, you're going to get a lot of attaboys uh, from across the Republican spectrum for picking Susie Wiles tonight. All right, Scott Jennings, thanks so much. We'll uh, somebody tell Mark Cuban. That uh, his campaign was run by a strong, intelligent woman. Strong, intelligent, beautiful woman. Somebody get, somebody get, somebody get Mark Cuban. Somebody make sure y'all let them, y'all let them know. And it's some, some powerful, strong, beautiful, intelligent women, smart women around Trump. And his supporters and the voters, we the people. Shout out to the beautiful women and smart and intelligent women, part of this family on this channel. You know, boy, man, it's getting. I'm telling y'all, man, some big things are happening, man. And we and he ain't even. Hey, we ain't even there yet. But prayers for Trump, man, because we don't know what to expect. We don't know what to expect, man. From now until January, the Democrats are acting nice and, <laughs> you know, some some still is a little fishy. Just saying, y'all. But uh, I was going I want to check this out. She was picked because Trump felt she was the best person for the job, not because she was a woman, because she was the best fit for the purpose. Applauding this loudly. Man, clearly a woman who doesn't want the limelight, but he but to help America great be great again. Mm. History, y'all. You know? History. Let's check it out, man. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button. Let me know how y'all feel about this.
Remember, again, I told you we're going to try to keep you guys updated to everything that's going on. Uh, you might have already knew this, but I just, wanna, I, just wanna, I just wanna shine a little light on it, man. You know, we done been through a whole lot this year, man. A lot of, you know, a lot of crap, man. A lot of crap, a lot of corruption. So we, you know, we 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 got to celebrate stuff like this and bring light to it, man. Just just being real. Special, but appreciation for Susie and Chris. The job you did. Susie, come Susie, come here. Come here. They did an amazing job, y'all. This has been one hell of a campaign. This has actually been a very entertaining election, you know, on both sides. We've, you know, we a lot of things we've seen, you know, take place to, to, just this year alone, you know, we never would have thought. You know, but they did such an amazing job, man. Amazing job. Susie, Chris, come here, Chris. Susie likes to stay sort of in the back, let me tell you. The Ice Maiden, we call her the Ice Maiden. Come here, Chris. Come here, Chris. Susie likes to stay in the background. She's not in the background. three elections he won all three we still trying to again we look at that report and even the uh, most recent report just came out yesterday you know showing how, there, there's just no way 81 million again we, we're not going to talk about the covid the covid ballots yeah we're not going to talk about them covid ballots man uh, 81 million votes though Uh, yeah, brother man. Yeah. Well, I want to go to an assessment of the media presentation of the broader U.S. election campaign, but the last sort of 28 to 48 hours as well, it wasn't as close as we were led to believe. Now that's obviously on the head of the pollsters, but the liberal mainstream media, they didn't like what they saw as yesterday unfolded. Have a look. You asked, 
Are there any places that the vice president is overperforming Joe Biden in 2020? Holy smokes. Here we go. People didn't come Holy out. Holy smokes. I don't know why, and it doesn't even matter. He's now the president. I'm still not going to say his name. Black voters came through this for Kamala Harris. They should cancel the spew. The, the spew. Not the view, the spew. How can anybody watch that crap in 2024? And we know why they didn't go out and, and, sh and show up, Whoopi. Because Kamala says, I grew up in the middle class. Dreams and aspirations. I cut my grass. I was a prosecutor. My values haven't changed. She flip-flopping all over the place. Nobody know what to believe. Communist, the, the com, commie, the comrade, chameleon. And now she's a black woman. So let's try to get the black vote. She's going to be the first black woman president. I kept telling y'all, man, the campaign was terrible. She bring in all these celebrities, all uh, the, and then it had the media on her side, the corrupt media, the fake news. And people saw through all that crap, man. They said the hell with Hollywood. The hell with the elite. At the dismantle of the deep state, we got to drain the swamp. Ah! Yes. White women voters did not. This will be the second opportunity that white women in this country have to change the way that they interact with the patriarchy. Well, Dan, it was a collective meltdown across the board. I could have shown hours and hours of that sort of stuff. I must say here in Australia too, the ABC, very, very slow to call it for Trump as well. Yeah, look, that's exactly right, Peter. And, and you look at that footage and you go, well, did, did they have any idea why they lost? They should be looking in the mirror. Uh, I think everything that you said in your monologue today, Peter, was absolutely spot on. Uh, and I'd add to that that the media, uh, particularly the left wing media, has no interest or curiosity in understanding why Trump won. They can't divorce the person from the policy. Um, they don't seek to understand why, uh, you know, tens of millions of Americans are looking for a voice. Uh, the political establishment has failed comprehensively, and I think that's true on both sides of politics. Uh, and Trump, and it also has to be said, J.D. Vance, offer a very different vision for mm -hmm. the future, of the future, sorry, uh, to that of, of Kamala Harris and, and the Democratic establishment. But it's clear that this is a seismic shift, not only to America, but to the Western world and the global order. Uh, our media has a, a responsibility and an obligation to understand what is happening, and in particular, the ramifications mm -hmm. for Australia, which I think overall will be positive, uh, but there will be challenges. But, uh, you know, as you say, they, they went into meltdown mode and, and they just blame the patriarchy or other extraneous factors rather than understanding that Trump has a lot of appeal to a lot of people. And Sophie, I mean, I, I was particularly critical tonight of the female commentators, uh, the female uh, boosters for the Democrats out there saying that basically uh, every woman must vote for Kamala because she's a woman or because she was advocating positions on abortion. But that's clearly not what happened as we see those results come in. We also had, I think, six jurisdictions where women voted for, for more liberal or, or, you know, lesser controls on abortion, but at the same time voted for Donald Trump as president. I mean, women care about the economy. Women care about national security. I think it debases the intelligence of women to think that we are single issue and we basically only vote for our own kind. They make the mistake about that here in Australia and I think too many commentators, even Australians looking over at the US, made that mistake here. Absolutely, Peter. They thought that all women would vote for Kamala Harris on this one issue, and that has proven absolutely <laughs> that was not the case. That's uh, but the, the media campaign. was in absolute meltdown too, Peter. I mean, one of the headlines at the front of the New York Times said, four more years of unpredictability. Uh, the world prepares for Trump's return. I mean, it was people were, the media was largely in damage control over this. A lot of them were cheering for Donald Trump and they are not happy, sorry, cheering for Kamala Harris and not happy that Donald Trump got in. And I think this is a warning shot to the media. Listen to the punters. Uh, they sometimes are going in there too often batting for a team and they should not be doing that. And this is case in point right there. 
spot on. Yeah. Leave it there. Thank you to you both. Yeah, man. You know? Don't get it done. Trying to get back on track. Time to make history again, man. Feels different, man. I don't know, y'all. It just, it just feels different now, man. You know? It only been about three, four days. This feels different. The energy, the, the vibes, man. It's completely different, man. Feeling good, man. But I hope y'all are feeling good, that you're blessed, you're well, you're healthy. And that 2024 treats you well as it's coming to an end and we start the new year off right, man. Prayers for Trump, his family, his team's campaign. We don't know what to expect next, man. Prayers, y'all. We don't know what to expect next in these crazy times. But I love y'all. Let me know what y'all think of all this and I will catch you beautiful people in the next one. Peace and love, y'all.